Look at it so very easy. My name is Laura. And featherweight carrion cases are very old and they're very valuable. So it's nice to keep them in the best shape that you can possibly keep them in. I'm going to show you how to make a padded carrion case for your own featherweight box. So the measurements that you need, you will be able to get from your own box. So to start with, I have chosen three different fabrics that go well together. And this is from Timeless Treasures. And it is a antique sort of vintage looking fabric. You're going to need a long zipper. If you don't have a long zipper, you're going to be able to use two zippers. And I'll show you how to put those two zippers together to make one. And a background fabric and this will be the fabric that's inside the box. The next thing is going to be a foam interfacing and this product is from Basel and it is foam that you can sew on and it is fusible on both sides and this is going to give that bag some padding and it's going to be easy to work with. And if you're going to quilt any of this you're going to want some matching thread. Now to get the measurements of your box. You need to measure all the way around and measure over top of the clips. My box is 42 inches. You're going to need a little extra space because the foam is going to take up some space, also the seam allowance. And if you're going to quilt it, it's going to shrink even more. So to start with, add two inches. So mine is 44. For the next measurement we're going to need, we're going to need the measurement around. And take the measurement over top of the handle because you want the largest part of the box. My measurement is 39 inches. And then add 2 inches. Now I'm going to need to take that measurement and divide it into 2. Now that you have the measurements, you can cut that piece out of the Basel foam. So I will need a piece 44 inches by 21 and a half. So the piece of Basel is going to be big enough to fit all the way around with an overlap and it's going to fit all the way around from top to bottom. Now we'll just put fabric over top of the Basel. So I just added three layers with a little bit on the side and because my Bernita does some beautiful stitches I just did some stitches for right for the center. Now you can take this to the iron and press all the layers together. So the back, the basel, and the top will be all pressed together. And once they're fused together, you will be able to quilt this however you want. And when you're finished quilting it, just make sure it's squared up. We're going to add the zippers now. And to get your measurement, you're going to start from the middle of the case where the handle is and measure down to the bottom of the little latch. So I have eight inches. And that eight inch measurement is where I'm going to want to put the zipper. You can get a zipper that opens up from the center and zips down and it can go in many directions and it's called a purse zipper. And you can get them quite long but if you can't get one you can use two regular zippers. This is a zipper that is closed at one end and opens up from the center. And where we have that eight inch mark is where we're going to put these zippers. And we're going to match up the top of the zippers together so that they will open in both directions. So mark down your eight inch mark and cut this right in half. Find the center of the panel and mark both pieces. So the zippers are going to be sewn on each side. And to make the zipper look as one, the first zipper is going to be just sewn on flat. The second zipper is going to overlap. So let's start with the first one. Place that part right there on the center mark. And with matching thread to the zipper, with the zipper foot, you're going to be able to sew the zipper on. You're going to just use the foot and stitch all the way down right off the end. And as you're stitching, you're going to be able to stop, move the zipper, and continue sewing. And when the one side is done, you can add the other side on. And you're going to overlap that little piece right at that center mark. Pin it and sew the zipper on. And when the zipper has been put on, you will be able to take the other side, match up those center marks, and sew the zipper onto the other side. 
And here the zippers will go together. Turn over to the back and then take the zipper, top stitch right along that edge of the zipper on both sides so you're going to make that zipper lie flat. By top stitching that zipper down it's going to give a very pretty finish on the back. If the zipper was long it would have just come right off but if you have a short zipper there's a nice way to fix this. Take a pair of scissors and just snip right up to that last stitch line and that seam is going to come open and lie flat. Now sometimes they might overlap a little bit or you might have a little bit of a space. Either or it's going to work out fine. Have the zipper closed and have it go nice and flat even though it might overlap a little bit. That's fine. Take one piece and put it at the top and draw along that edge and then trim off that little extra. Now both of these seams are going to go together and they're going to be nice and flat. You'll be able to just take a zigzag and zigzag right over top to hold those pieces together. Then we're going to cover that. And to cover that piece just take a scrap of fabric and fold it so the seams inside are touching and press it. And as you're pressing that in just take the end and press it in so you have a nice clean finish all the way around. Now you're just going to be able to take that piece, place it right on top and top stitch all the way down. Now you'll be able to trim off the extra and it has a nice finish to it. The next is going to be fitting your cover around your box. Have the cover go around so you'll know exactly how much seam allowance you need. You don't want to have it so tight that you're not going to be able to put the box in. And sew the back closed. And to finish the top you'll need to make some binding. I like to start with a two inch long strip of fabric, fold it in half, match the folded edges, stitch it down a quarter inch and then pull that over to the back side and stitch it down and you'll have a nice finish for the top. So right now you have a very large tube and we're going to take this tube and we're going to custom fit it to the carrion case. Turn the tube so that the wrong side is out and fold the bottom up just so it's going to be out of your way. Find the center of the tube and slide it over the case so that the center is in the case and just slide that on. By moving this up you're going to be able to work on the top without this bottom in the way because you're going to do the bottom last. But let's do the top. Take the top edge and lay it right against the handle on the back and do the same thing for the front. So the handle is going to be sticking out and you will have a space in here. The next thing is going to be pinning the side flaps out of the way. And you're going to do it just like you would wrapping a gift. Place pins along both of the edges so it's going to match the top of the box. And once they're pinned you're going to be able to pull this right off and stitch right along the pin lines. When the flaps are done turn the bag right side out. So you now have this big opening in the front and this is where the handle was. Take that flap, tack a couple of stitches to hold it down into the front. You will need to turn this right side out and open up the zipper a little bit so you're going to be able to get your hand inside. Fit the cover over top and turn it upside down so that the handle is resting on the counter. The zipper is opened up a little bit and the handle is in the bottom. Now we need to fit the bottom closed. Take the bottom and match up the seams and mark where a seam allowance is going to go. Don't pull it so tight that the zipper is pulled open. So by undoing that zipper you're going to be able to take the case out and sew the bottom. Using the mark I know that that is going to be the seam allowance for the entire bottom. When the seam allowance has been sewn you can put it back on because we're going to miter the bottom. Just slip the case in and you'll be able to mark these corners just like you did the top. Once you've made your marks you can open up the bottom seam and stitch right down over top of the seam. Once the corners have been sewn you can take and cut the extra off and do a zigzag stitch to close that seam off. When the corners are done turn the bag right side out and poke out your corners. Your carrying case will now fit into the bottom. 
and the top will go on and go right over. The handle will come out of the little top that you made. The zipper will be able to be closed and you're done. And you won't need to take the cover off every time you want to get the machine. You're just going to be able to undo it and you will be able to flip open your little latches and it's all going to open up. Now you'll be able to use the same principle to cover any case at all. You're just going to need the measurements, add a zipper, and then sort of gift wrap the top and the bottom, and you're done. And it's going to help save the covers from getting the nicks and the bangs as you're traveling. And well, it is kind of cute. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe, and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.